Okay, so coming into this part of the lesson, you should already have some textures and water and a little bit of island design done. But today what we're going to be going over is how to add trees and other details to your scene. Now we already have some of these in our assets thanks to importing the environmental assets, so we're already good to go there. So let's keep working our way to the right in our terrain tools, and let's click on this little icon that looks like a kindergartner's drawing of a couple of trees called place trees. Here it gives us some advice saying hold down shift to erase trees and hold down control to erase selected tree type. Because we have more than one tree type to work from, let's say you paint a bunch of palm trees and pine trees and you decide the pine trees don't work for you and they're all mixed together, you can erase just the pine trees without touching the palm trees, which is pretty handy. But to even start painting trees, just like with our terrains last time, right now we have no trees defined. So just like with our terrain, we're going to click on Edit Trees, and then Add Tree. Now this window that pops up looks a little bit different, but what we want to do, where it says None Game Object, we want to click on the Circle Select icon to the right. Now you'll see we have a bunch of assets here, but some should stand out to you as pretty obviously trees. We have these two broadleaf trees, we have this conifer tree, which is like a pine tree, and we have a palm tree. Now being a desert island theme that we're kind of going with right now, the palm tree makes a lot of sense. Not that it's the only type of tree we could use, but that's the one I'll start with. So I'll double click on that and then click add. So now we have a palm tree right here that we can start painting with. Before I tell you what to do, I'm gonna give you one quick thing not to do. When you paint the terrain, it's pretty natural and it works well to just click and hold and drag your paintbrush and paint the terrain across the surface. If you try something like that with the trees, especially with our default settings, where our brush size is 40 and our tree density is at 83, watch what happens when I click and hold. All right, it made trees, but that's like an insane amount of trees. Let's go see what happens when I test play after painting that. Okay, well, my character is dropping into the game world, and the forest is so dense that I didn't even fall into it yet. I'm walking on top of the trees. Also, you'll notice there's an insane amount of lag. Not just because these trees exist, but because these trees are forcing our light source to try to render shadows all over the place. So, having this many trees in here uh, really probably isn't a good idea. Now remember, I could shift-click to erase trees, which is pretty handy. Of course, in a situation like this, I can also just use Command Z to get rid of these trees really quickly, which is what I'll be doing. So if that doesn't work, how should we go about placing our trees? Well, first off, I'm going to turn my tree density way down to maybe like 10. You can play around with this number, but 83 is almost certainly higher than we need. I'll even turn my brush size down a little bit, just so I'm not painting over such a large area. And then, the most important thing is instead of clicking and holding and dragging, if you just do a single tap, a single click, like here near the beach as we get to the grass, I'll just give a little click, and if we zoom in you'll see that it placed a single tree right there. Now you don't have to get it down to the point where you're only placing a single tree, you can keep your brush size pretty big actually, and click you can get kind of a nice scattering of trees. This is a good way to start filling up your scene without hand placing every tree. You can go ahead and start placing just sort of groups of trees and batches of trees. And if you want them to be a little bit denser, sure you could turn tree density up, or you could just click again and again until it feels like you've got a forest or whatever the feel of trees you want is. Until it feels like you've got a forest or however many trees feels right to you without going insane like happened earlier when we just clicked and held and we painted a million trees that are going to create lag and a whole host of other problems. And of course, as you, so as you're working on this, if anything feels weird, like I notice I've got some trees that are growing out of the ocean and that doesn't feel right. That's when I'll jump back to my tree tool and I can do a little shift click and I can get rid of those trees that are placed in odd places. And now if I go test play, I've got some trees. This is a more exciting environment to explore. It's not creating a whole bunch of extra lag, and it's not such a dense forest that I can't even navigate through it. Now, if you've got trees figured out, the next step's going to be pretty easy because it's very similar. To the right of our Place Trees button, 
looks like a kindergartner's drawing of three flowers, which when we hover on it says place plants, stones, and other small foliage. So we'll be using this to do some tall grass, grass that's tall enough that it rises up off of the flat texture and blows around in the breeze a little bit. Just like our terrain and trees, right now it doesn't know what to use for the grass. So we need to go and we need to click on edit details once again, and then click on add grass texture. Once again, you'll go up to the top and you will click on the circle select. And again, we get a lot of assets and not all of these are going to work the way that you want. In fact, only a few will really do what we want here. We are looking for both of these grass fronds that are right next to each other. These will both work nicely. You can also use either of these palm fronds will work just fine. So I'll select this palm frond and then I'll click add. Now I'm gonna go somewhere down near my character controller so that we can see this as it works. But as I start to paint my details, this is another good time to talk about something not to do first. Just like clicking and holding with the tree tool places way too many trees, clicking and holding with the detail tool will do a very similar thing. So you can see I click and hold and this is a very, very dense amount of these palm fronds, which will again eventually create a lot of lag and it's probably just kind of overkill. There may be certain areas where you want to have really dense palm fronds, but you probably don't want them covering your whole island like this. So again, I'll Command Z that. You may turn down the target strength and opacity so that you aren't placing quite as many palm fronds. The truth is the best way to control this is simply instead of clicking and holding and dragging around, just a single click will create sort of a nice spread of these without going overboard. And if it ever feels like too much, you can always go ahead and erase a little bit at a time. But this is a nice way to add more to your environment so that it doesn't feel so flat and empty. Remember, aside from the palm fronds, you also have two different grass frond options, and those look something like this. So whether you use one or the other or a combination of both, make sure that you use some of these details and these trees somewhere in your scene. One last thing about this tool that you should really know is when you're zoomed out, you'll notice you don't see the details. It's not because they're not there, it's just because the computer is trying to reserve processing power and not show us every detail when we're really far away from it. So the trees will almost always be visible, but the details will disappear when you zoom pretty far out. So if you're trying to see what you're doing while you're working, it pays to be kind of zoomed in. Or just trust that when you're zoomed out, if you're clicking, even if you're not seeing it, when you zoom in and look at those areas, sure enough, those grass details are there. They just don't show up until you're pretty close. So don't go crazy clicking all over the place, wondering why it isn't working. If you have a detail selected and you're clicking on your terrain, you're almost certainly painting it. If you don't see it show up, you're probably just zoomed a little too far out. So go ahead and I've been placing these fairly randomly. It's looking a little bit messy. I want you guys to take your time, create a beautiful island that looks like it's fun to explore, add trees, add details, make it feel believable, create paths, create beaches, create hills, mountains, whatever you want, lakes, ponds, take your time and really make it look nice. When you're happy with the way that your island looks, be sure to take a screenshot of it. And then don't forget to go to Schoology and post that screenshot in the comments so you can get credit for all the work that you've done. All right, until next week, good luck and have fun.